That's how I got so strong. Giant's milk. Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back. We hope you're having a wonderful day so far and after watching this video, we hope that it gets even better. So get comfortable, grab that popcorn and smash the like button if you're a fan of Game of Thrones and get ready for something that you probably haven't seen before. The award-winning TV series Game of Thrones is one of HBO's biggest hits ever and has attracted a record viewership with each new season. Based on the Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin, it tells the story of nine noble families fighting over the seven kingdoms of Westeros while an ancient enemy is getting ready to return after thousands of years of dormancy. Following a two-year wait, the series' eighth and final season has arrived at last and with three episodes to go, the fans can hardly wait to find out who wins the final battle. The series has gone down in history as the most expensive TV show ever produced, with a budget of an estimated $15 million per episode of its latest season. However, even the biggest budget doesn't save you from making errors, and in today's video we are looking back at 7 of the biggest mistakes that slipped through the editing in Game of Thrones. Let's start at the beginning of the first season of the show, where the creators already got themselves into a hairy situation. On the show, the men of the north are usually known for their full beards and their long hair, but in the very first episode of Game of Thrones titled Winter is Coming, both Rob Stark and Jon Snow got haircuts and a clean shave in anticipation of the arrival of King Robert. Strangely enough, their hair had miraculously grown long again when they found the lost dire wolf pups not long after, and this continuity error might have gone unnoticed by the editors of the show, but it was certainly not lost on attentive viewers. The premiere of Game of Thrones Season 6 was probably one of the most dramatic episodes, with Jon Snow still left for dead, as we learned that the Red Woman was not quite what she appeared to be. Viewers were shocked to find out that the ornate ruby necklace that Lady Melisandre always wears seemed to be full of dark magic, and gave her the appearance of a young woman while she was really over 400 years old. But as shocking as this was, it was even more shocking to some that we had already seen the Red Woman without jewelry before, only back then, she hadn't revealed her real self. When Lady Melisandre was talking to Selyse Baratheon while taking a bath in Season 4, she wasn't wearing her ruby necklace, yet she still appeared as a young woman, which has led to several theories. Some viewers have speculated that Melisandre's sole appearance is simply perception, while others wonder if perhaps only she can see herself in her real form. Blue one. No, 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 not that one. You don't even want to touch that one. But since the show's creators have not commented on the issue to this day, it seems most likely that this is a continuity error that they simply missed. Next up is a mistake that could easily have been avoided if the show had used some fact checkers. Back in Season 1, as Khal Drogo prepared to give Viserys Targaryen his golden crown, many viewers were surprised as to how quickly the gold melts. In the episode, it took just a few seconds for the golden medallions to change from solid to liquid, when it should have taken a lot longer. Viserys' gruesome death was one of the most memorable ones from the entire series, but not exactly realistic, simply because of its scientific inaccuracy. In fact, it wouldn't have been possible to melt gold in a cooking fire at all, as pure gold has a melting point of 1945 degrees Fahrenheit, while a cooking fire reaches nowhere near this temperature, with the average campfire being around 700 degrees. Khal Drogo and his Kalasar might not have been aware of this, but the show's producers should certainly have known better, or at least hired someone who does. Season 5's fourth episode saw Daenerys travel to Marine, and we were in for some pretty epic fighting scenes as Danny's patrol of the Unsullied were ambushed and defeated by the Sons of the Harpy. The episode marked the last appearance of actor Ian McElhinney, whose character, Sir Barristan Selmy, died in the battle. You probably remember the scene where the Unsullied, led by Barristan and Grey Worm, took the Sons of the Harpy in the bowels of Marine, where Barristan was eventually killed, while Grey Worm barely escaped alive. Towards the end of the episode, both men were shown collapsing in a room filled with the bodies of dead fighters of both sides, but just a moment later as the camera panned out, several of the bodies had vanished, or somehow dissolved into thin air. 
In the first season, Lady Catelyn's sister Liza accuses Tyrion of being an accomplice in her husband's murder and consigns him to the Aerys dungeons, the Sky Cells, which are prison cells with an open wall and slanted floors that slope down to a precipice. About the gold. Now gold. Now Listen to me. These cells also have skylights that have been subject to a lot of discussions among viewers, as many have not only pointed to the fact that having skylights in a cell where an entire wall is missing and one is exposed to the elements is pretty ridiculous, but also to the fact that nothing else about these skylights makes sense either. As the camera pans out, the skylights seem to vanish, and a wider shot also reveals that even if the skylights were still there, there would be no way for the light to shine through since Tyrion's cell is neither on the outer wall nor on the top floor of the building, meaning it's impossible for any light to shine through his cell because the cell above his doesn't have holes in the floor that would explain light coming in through the skylights, so it seems like someone wasn't paying attention in the editing department. In the ninth and penultimate episode of the sixth season, Battle of the Bastards, Jon Snow and Ramsay Bolton face off in a battle for control of Winterfell, and while Jon's force, mostly composed of wildlings, is defeated by the Bolton army, the latter is overcome when Sansa and Littlefinger arrive with the Knights of the Vale. The battle contains some of the greatest fighting scenes of the entire show and culminates in Ramsay's defeat and capture. However, not before he tragically kills Rickon, and not before we see one of the most embarrassing mistakes of the show. As Ramsay pulls back his bow and arrow and aims to shoot down Rickon, Jon Snow races to save the youngest of the Stark children, but when he leaps onto his horse, you can see that his sword is just a floppy prop sword made of rubber. While most eyes were obviously on Kit Harrington in this scene, some fans noticed the rubber sword and renamed Jon Snow's Longclaw to Long Noodle. It shouldn't really come as a surprise that the Game of Thrones cast isn't running around on set with real weapons, but are given safer options to wield. Still, the editing team should have probably paid a little bit more attention in this scene, simply because Jon Snow's floppy sword makes Valyrian steel look pretty bad. There are a ton of easter eggs in the opening titles from Game of Thrones, as each opening contains information about where the episode will take place, and the updated version of Season 7 even points to how the White Walkers managed to get around the Magic Wall of Ice. Through the seasons, the titles have shown a burning Winterfell, the fall of Meereen and the actor's name alongside the sigils of the house their character belongs to. However, there have been a few mistakes during the earliest seasons, as the first two episodes of season 1 show an image of a dragon next to Sophie Turner's name for example, and we all know that Sansa Stark has nothing to do with dragons, and that the blood of the wolf pack runs through her veins, so listing her as a Targaryen is a pretty big mistake. The first two episodes also show Ian Glenn, who plays Dora Mormont next to the Lannister Lion, and Rory McCann who portrays the Hound next to a Baratheon stag. However, an even more embarrassing mistake might be the fact that Amelia Clarke, who plays the nearest Targaryen, a character that constantly reminds us of her name and the fact that she is the mother of dragons, is listed as a Lannister in these few episodes. Although these mistakes might just be errors that slipped by the editors in the early days and things got a lot more consistent in the following seasons, there was one more blunder in the opening titles of the season 2 episode The Old Gods and the New, where Jack Gleason, alias Joffrey Baratheon, who is actually a Lannister of course, is listed next to the Stark Wolf. Looks like the editors still had some catching up to do, or maybe we're in for some really shocking revelations in the final episodes of the series. When I was 12, I milked my eel into a pot of turtle stew. I flogged the one-eyed snake. I skinned my sausage. I made the bald man cry. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.